Hey guys, now that the year has officially ended and many people consider 2023 to be one of the worst year to be a software engineer. As someone who was working as a software engineer, I kind of want to share a little bit of my experience. The first one is definitely layoff and mental resilience. In the spam of 2023, I went through three to four rounds of layoff. And a lot of those are nerve wracking anticipations. And you had to work through a lot of these uncertainties. It really trained my mental resilience, to be honest. I remember when I first heard about these rumors from outside source, it just made everything worse. Of course, like later on in the next few round of layoff, the company had the CEOs or whomever in charge start giving a heads up. Oh, we're going to do a layoff. You know, it's not any better because we still had to work through all these uncertainties. Like, why am I even working? Like, if I'm going to be laid off, like, can we do our best work knowing that there's so much uncertainty? But if there's a round of layoff, like, should I be working really hard right now to, you know, make it seem like I'm a key asset? So maybe like if my manager's deciding, like, they're not likely to lay me off because I'm proving that to be one of the more top performers. Like there's a lot of these thoughts going on. Like it was definitely a very stressful time. The economy was really bad. All the companies were having layoffs. So to many people, it seems like, yeah, like if you get affected by these layoffs, it's, it's like there's no other opportunities. It's so hard to find a job. And of course, like going through all this, what happened to me is, I definitely sacrifice a lot of my work-life balance because I'm constantly thinking about these things. Of course, like I know most likely I won't be as affected because of the type of project I'm working on, but still you can't help but to think like, oh, even the top priority could have a small percentage of layoff because layoff is pretty much random. They press a button, maybe you're affected. And this is also when I realized, you know, a job is just a job. Like companies, they hire you for a job. But you are still a will employee. So they can fire you, they can let you go anytime, especially in the United States. So to the end of the day, what's the most important thing to you is your mental health. Don't get burned out. Like at the end of the day, like you are your biggest asset. The longer you can stay healthy and mentally resilient and not letting yourself burn out, getting fired is not the end of the day because you still have these valuable experiences and tech is a field that's going to be even more relevant and constantly growing. Laying off isn't the end, but if you are burned out, if you are feeling like you are drained and then this defeats your confidence or mental, then, you know, it's a lot worse. And in those situations, it's definitely a lot worse. Those are definitely some of the work emotional level of things that I went through. But to a brighter note, Gen AI. Many people thought Gen AI was going to be the savior, but also at the same time going to destroy a lot of software engineering job. So my experience working as a software engineer so far is that I definitely noticed my productivity has gone up because of these tools. We have code completion tools. We have tools that's like ChatGPT, the internal version probably at your company since a lot of companies don't want you to use external resources. So there's a lot of tools that allow me to ask questions. So before maybe the product cycle is I talk to a lot of people and then, you know, maybe I'm worried about asking too many questions to other people because a lot of times your rating is depending on feedbacks. And if people always see you asking questions, maybe that's not too good of a sign depending on the type of question you ask. But now ChatGPT, like technology, is here for the rescue. You can clear they ask a lot of the, the questions to ChatGPT and hoping for a response. Of course, they're not perfect. Like I made a separate video on this, how ChatGPT is great, but I noticed it lacks steps. Like it always stops at the surface level. When I ask it to go deeper, if it always trying to explain to you in the most common possible sense. And a lot of times that's not what I need. And this clearly shows there's still a gap in this type of technologies, but I'm really excited to see more. At my company, there's so many new initiatives around Gen AI. What can we do to, with Gen AI? How can we leverage it to our existing products? I see many startups that's focused on an aspect of Gen AI. Of course, Gen AI might become one of these like buzzwords that's kind of like a bubble potentially, but I still think it's a great field. 
it's going to improve a lot of productivity. And many tools, if they don't migrate to Gen AI or add some sort of AI to it, it will get destroyed in the future. So that's definitely something in the span of 2023 that we have seen. And besides that, like one thing that we picked up as a software engineer was the option to work remotely. I think we really reached our peak in the middle of the pandemic. And nowadays, especially in the year 2023, a lot of these bigger tech companies, companies in general are pushing back against remote. It's either because like, oh, if you join remotely, then you don't learn as much. There's like a lack of skill set because you don't get to interact with people as much and you don't get the help right away. So if you are onboarded remotely, you are less likely to be successful. And maybe other, re other reasons such as like, oh, employees are lazy, they don't work as hard, and they're not in an office setting. So we do see a huge pushback in remote opportunities, especially at a lot of bigger tech companies who once said, yes, we want to push for remote. So now a lot of them are pushing back into hybrid work style where you go back to the office two to three times a week. So you do have that in-person FaceTime and then working together. And I don't think that's going away. And remote also is not going away completely. Some companies, especially startups or some company who are remote first are still pushing for it. But I do see the number of options of remote jobs are going down since more companies are favoring this in-person hybrid work style. So I do see the future for software engineering is going to be very exciting still. There's so many newer fields that, that is made possible because of Gen AI and the, all these new breakthroughs. So I do think 2024 might be one of the better years for software engineer. Of course, like we didn't start out the year so strong with a lot of layoffs still. But I do think a lot of these newer technologies will enable people who are in position to extract and take advantage of it. So unfortunately, this is kind of like, you know, if you're looking at the history, it's kind of like, are you positioned to take advantage of this? If you are, then you know, great. Like, it's kind of like, oh, you compound and then you become better and better. But for newer people who want to break into tech, I still see like it's going to be very challenging as a lot of companies aren't aggressively hiring still. There's people who are graduating. There's people who are in boot camp. There are so many people who are laid off. Of course, the market itself is still lacking high profiled developers and there is a lack of supply for these type of developers so i would say definitely if you're someone who's thinking about going into tech try to build as deep of a knowledge as possible leverage the tools and really position yourself in what's trending such as maybe gen ai full stack some of these popular fields i would say these are going to be very valuable moving forward especially now that we are in 2024 yeah for me as a software engineer I want to learn as much as possible in this upcoming years. Build my skill set, maybe trying to see what Gen AI has to offer. And of course, like one of the biggest thing that you can do when you work for a bigger tech company is to climb the ladder. So ideally speaking, I'm hoping that I will get promoted into the next level. And of course, at the end of the day, what's the most important is the type of knowledge that you accumulate because tech is something that you can actually carry from one job to another and that's something really amazing and that can keep you more valuable so yeah guys this is my first video of the year and i would love to hear recommendations what you guys want to see thank you so much for watching i will see you guys next time